The world is a very turbulent place at the moment, and there are plenty of countries where media freedom is seriously under threat. Turkey, uh, where there are scores of journalists in prison. China and Russia, where uh, media freedom scarcely exists. When the UK government points out to those regimes the shortcomings of the way in which they treat the media, they have one answer. Julian Assange. If you're doing that to Julian Assange, why shouldn't President Erdogan lock journalists up? Why shouldn't Putin have his entire media in a complete straitjacket? That's, you know, the damage that we do to our own reputation. It might sound highfalutin, but it actually has a real impact on the, 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 the effects that we can have on countries of that kind. And Jennifer, and then I'll come straight to you. Jennifer, Niels Meltzer, the UN uh, former rapporteur on torture, wrote a whole book on the, on the Assange case. And picking up from what Stella just said, there was a lot of illegality catalogued in the book. How did we get to this spot now? And uh, apart from the appeals that you just mentioned, how, how much longer, how many avenues do you see to right this wrong? Well, it's, it's correct to say there's been, as we argued in the case below, there's been a huge amount of abusive process in Julian's case. Uh, there's been a seizure of legally privileged material from inside the embassy. There's been unlawful spying on him, on us as his legal team, on his family. There have been uh, unlawful plots to assassinate and kidnap him. It is hard to imagine a case having more abusive process and injustices than this one. Of course, we are using every avenue available to us within the British legal system and ultimately in the European Court of Human Rights to put together the ongoing injustices against him and use all legal avenues available to us. And we hope that we will be successful because if we're not, what that says about press freedom and about due process in this country and in democratic countries is incredibly concerning. I'm just... Yeah. Uh, to add that I think what, what's needed is to stop treating Julian's case as if it's some kind of sui generis case. This is setting, this is now going to the High Court. This is setting legal precedent about the scope of press freedom in this country, not just in relation to extraditions and political extraditions, which the Home Secretary seems to find perfectly um, fine, which, by the way, the very extradition request that the U.S. has sent for Julian under the Espionage Act um, for crimes uh, charged on, under the Espionage Act are in open breach of the U.S.-U.K. extradition treaty, Article 4, prohibiting political offenses, extraditions for political offenses. Both the U.S. and the U.K. are in breach of their own bilateral extradition treaty. So what is decided at the High Court about the equivalence between the Espionage Act and the Official Secrets Act as it operates right now, that affects all of you and your colleagues. So stop treating this like it's Julian Assange. This is, he's one of you. Whether you like it or not, he is one of you because he is being prosecuted as one of you. 